Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Indian Mathematical Olympiad 2001 problem number 6. We want to find all functions f from the set of real numbers into itself such that f of x plus y equals f of x times f of y times f of x times y for all the real numbers x and y. Funny little problem. Uh, here, here are my hints. First, consider uh, the case when f has a zero, what happens then if f equals zero for some argument? And crucially, the funny part, then change y to y plus z, so introduce a third variable, and pay attention to any symmetry going on with respect to x, y, and z. So give this problem a try and I will see you in a minute. So first of all, I will denote my functional equation by asterisk, and I will consider two cases. Case number one. Uh, case number one, f has a zero, i.e. f of y zero equals zero for some real numbers y zero. What can be said about our function? Well, Let's set x to be any real number and let's set y to be y0 in our equation which I marked asterisk. What do we have now? We have f of x plus y0 and notice that since f of y0 is 0, this entire right hand side becomes 0. And remember that that holds for every real number x. So our function is constantly zero. In other words, f is constantly, or maybe the right it, for every x, f of x is zero. Okay. Nothing very interesting. Second case will be much more interesting. Case number two f has has not uh, uh, f sorry f does not have does not have any zeros any zeros i.e. i.e. for every real number y f of y is non-zero and then the funny part, change, let's change y to y plus z in our condition asterisk. We have now the following. On the left hand side, we have f of x plus y plus z. And on the right hand side, we have f of x, f of y plus z, f of x times y plus z, which can be written as f of x, f of y plus z, f of x, y plus x, z. Fantastic. And now I will use my condition asterisk two more times, because thanks to our condition asterisk, this part can be written as f of y, f of z, f of y times z and in similar way this part can be written as f of x y f of x z and finally f of x y x z and now let's simplify it and let's put it in right order so we have f of x f of y f of z f of y, z, f of z, x, f of x, y. And the final term, I will maybe write it in blue, f of x squared, y, z. And now, using the fact that our function has cannot attain zero, I can safely divide by that entire business. And I have the following, f of x squared 
y z equals f of x plus y plus z f of x f of y f of z f of y times z f of z times x f of x times y very well and now what do we see now we see that if you look closely the right hand side is completely symmetric with respect to x y and z symmetric with respect to x y and z which means that i can freely um, change x y and z so in particular it should be true what that for every real numbers x y and z for every real numbers x y and z uh, well f of x squared y z for example should be equal f of x y squared z very well and now let's notice it should be rather easy to check but every every two numbers two non-zero non-zero numbers a and b can be written can be written as a equals x squared y z and b equals x y squared z so it's a little claim i leave verification to you verification is very easy because intuitively we have three variables x y and z so using three variables it should be possible to express any other two variables and now i need a new page very well and that means that means that for every real non-zero numbers for every non-zero numbers a and b f of a equals f of b so in other words ie ie f is constant f is constant on the set of non-zero numbers very well so now we now we know very much about our function and first of all i wish to find the value of this constant so let's take let's set let's go back to our first original equation asterisk and let's set set x y and z to be for example one in asterisk in the very first functional equation oh no what's going on okay and i have f of two equals f of y and cubed and notice that these two numbers are the same f of two we know that our function is constant so it's the same as f of one cubed because our function is constant on non-zero numbers we can safely divide by f of one since we know that it's non-zero and now we know that f of one is either plus or minus one plus or minus one very well and now finally what i will set uh, i will set set x uh, sorry uh, there was no z in our first original in our original uh, functional equation so now set x and y to be 
or maybe set x to be 1 and let's set y to be minus 1 in asterisk. And we have now the following. On the left hand side we have f of x plus y, so it's f of 0. f of 0 equals f of 1 times f of 1 times, sorry, f of 1 times f of minus 1, because it's f of y, times f of 1 times minus 1. And every term is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1. Every time we, we, uh, we choose the same sign, so either 3 times 1, or we have 3 minus 1s. So it's plus or minus 1 exactly the same as f of 1. Exactly the same as f of 1. Which means that, in fact, now we know that for every 2, or maybe that f is constant on the entire set of real numbers, not only for non-zero real numbers. And that means constant, and it's either plus or minus 1. So, all in all, our functional equation has three solutions. Function which is constantly 1, which is constantly minus 1, and function which is constantly 0. So we have these solutions f of x or f equals minus 1 or f equals 0 or f equals 1. That notation should be understood to mean that for every x f of x equals minus 1 or for every x f of x equals 0 and so on. And that closes our problem. So, one lesson to be learned from there, it's sometimes it's beneficial to introduce a third variable and to pay attention to any kind of symmetry. The crucial part of my reasoning was changing y to be y plus z. And that's it. So, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.